Alright, hi everyone. Um, do I actually need to use it? Do you guys all hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I don't think I need it. But anyone who has a, you know, the little yeah, phone so call monthly, I yeah, have Yeah, because when they're it? recording. Okay. There's some more recording. Yeah. yeah, actually we have two recordings. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, hi everyone, thank you for coming. I'm really happy to have you all here. Um, this is our first event for us to do anything to do with the books that we've published and uh, some of you already know about what we do and how we started and so on, some of you do not. So I'm just going to give you a very short brief about it before we, uh, we start. Um, Sail Magazine actually started back in 2010. Uh, now we are about five years old as a magazine and uh, we publish opinion pieces about the culture and community. All our writers are Emiratis and we write in English language to make sure that we reach an international audience and we give the chance to all the Emiratis who like to write in English a platform that they can publish on. Uh, we expanded last year into another online magazine that is actually for everyone and all genres of writing. And end of last year we actually started into the uh, digital publishing books. Uh, since then we have four books that we've published. First book that we published was for Alia Shamsi. You can raise your hands if you know you. So Alia published a children's illustrated book, it's called Alaya, and you see the roll-ups out there and you can as well get the autographs after the event. The second book we published was for Amar al basaidi so they know him. Uh, Amar's book is called Just Read It and it's a business self-help book. The third book we published was for Sarah al-Mullah and it's called A Journey With Them, you can read it out. <laughs> and it's a poetry and short stories book, I think everyone would enjoy it because there's short stuff that you can always enjoy at any point in time. The last book that we have is from Hamad al It's a fiction book and it's a novelette. So you guys can read it, it's very short. You read it within a couple of hours and you really enjoy the story that he wrote. So now for us to start, I think I'm just going to ask a question about each one of you. So the novel is dark like that? It's yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you each to tell us a bit more about your book. What is your book about? And what inspired you to start the book? So, Sara? Yeah. Okay, so my book, as Iman said, is a collection of poems, proses that I wrote over a couple of years. So they're about life, uh, love, dreams, anything you can think about. Anything I felt at the moment and that I wanted to unload or relieve myself from feeling, I would write it down and then I would see how I would actually feel on paper. And then I would send broadcasts and people would tell me that we love what you write and then I would write more. And I guess the feeling of relieving yourself of what you feel really inspired me to keep writing because it was a sort of therapy for me. So, and I, I never thought I would publish these things that I write, but eventually when I had so many of them, I was like, why not? Let's just publish them. That's the keyword, guys, why not? All right, Alia. Tell us, what inspired you to start your book and actually write it? Um, okay, so it's, it's a little bit tricky over here because it's the second book that I wrote, um, but I decided to go uh, with it first. Um, so it's a little bit of an experiment that I did, um, and my illustrator is uh, Hidayah, wish it would be a but... Um, She's gone? So, yeah, she left. <coughs> okay. um, so anyways, it's sort of, um, let's say I was at a time in my life where I was feeling a little bit lost, and um, I was going through a lot of changes. Um, I've just recently separated, and uh, so you know, it leaves you kind of like not knowing where you are and a bit lost your identity. You're this person now; you're becoming something else, and you're trying to find out who you are. So Alaya, yes, it is a story about a little girl that had sand in her hair, um, which sort of came about when I was sitting down on the beach. It's sort of my place to sort of focus and you know feel at home and connected. So uh, when I walked out, I realized I had sand everywhere. I was like, oh my god, I have sand here and here. And I'm, I started removing, I'm like, oh my god, I even have sand in my hair. That moment, I just sat down and I wrote that story. So that's sort of the idea of it. I, I just write. So I wrote that story, and it was all about sort of nostalgia of the past, um, trying to reconnect, and that you no know, matter where you go, sort of your roots reconnect you to who you are and where you're from. Uh, Alaya, Amar? Um, yeah, uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming, um, uh, some of them from Saudi Arabia. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, so my name is Omar Abu Saidi, I'm the author of Just Read It. Uh, when a lot of people ask me, like, why did I write this book, or what inspired me to write this book? Uh, well, at that po particular point in 2012, I think 2011, I was divorced and unemployed. So, uh, but 
what happened is, uh, I'm just like Khalid Al Amri, uh, we're always invited to go and give talks on entrepreneurship, etc., at different universities and schools. And uh, I used to present uh, to the classroom with like one big picture on the presentation, PowerPoint presentation, and just one statement on top. So every single time I would go uh, and give these lectures, the students have this habit of not taking notes, which is which I find me personally very annoying. I don't like when I'm explaining something and someone's not taking notes because I know they won't remember any of the points that I mentioned. Not all of them, some of them, most of them. And then, uh, so as much as I used to keep reminding them, please take notes, please take notes, then one of the students who used to always come to my class, he said, okay, Omar, I don't like taking notes, but I like reading. Why don't you just write a book and I'll read your book? So I thought of all the things that I've done in my life, why don't I just write a book? So I wrote a book. And it was a collection of all the things that I put together in the presentations, but this was like even more and expanding more, and it's about 127 pages. And uh, alhamdulillah, it's, it's picking up well. Yeah, it's published. Thank you, Ima. Okay. So I'm going to uh, give you a bit of an introduction about Shallow and how it started and what inspired me to start with Shallow. Uh, since I was young, I felt like... Um, Keeping your emotions in was very hard. As a young young child, as a teenager growing up, emotions, keeping them inside, that's one of the worst things you can do for a child. And I think bottling these up, I think, made me who I am today. And when I started uh, Shadow, I remember I was sitting at home. Uh, I didn't have any, I wasn't divorced. I didn't have anything else. Uh, but I was, uh, I, I, I am sorry. I, I feel bad. But so you no, don't have a bad situation to write a book. No I, didn't mean, no, I didn't mean it in a negative way. I would just mean that I didn't have any life changing situation that made me, or, or <clears throat> let me write start my, book, yeah. yeah, start the book. But what happened was I remember I was sitting at home. I remember about talking about these emotions. When we speak about emotions, when we talk about them, our emotions come in a fragment wise in ways where we explain our emotions in a certain uh, limitation. Uh, not a lot of people like to speak about their emotions or whatever emotions they would like to speak about. So I started writing the story about Chloe, the main character, and then she started speaking about her emotions. I honestly couldn't stop at that time for her to explain who she wanted to be throughout the whole story. For me, that's what inspired me. I felt like the book kept growing, and she kept speaking to me, and that's what uh, made me feel uh, the story more than just the idea of um, uh, than the idea of just emotion. It turned into something else because now her emotions were speaking to me, not just the idea. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, I think this is a question that's going to be for a lot of people when they start writing a book. They can't really continue finishing the book. So the question is going to be for you guys. The, Sarah, by the time that you actually gave us the book, the manuscript, you already were at a very far stage as opposed to the rest of the people who would come and say they would only have 70 pages. You actually already were at a 170 or 160 pages of poetry. So how did you really continue that process without really stopping in the middle? Did it take you a long time, years, and so on? I think for me, my advantage was that I didn't really think about publishing the book at first. So I didn't stress myself that, okay, I, I need to finish the book. Uh, if I have a writer's block, when am I going to write again? I just, whenever I felt like writing, I would write. Whenever I had a writer's block, I would just let it be until I, I would feel like writing again. Um, I would usually go to different places, like to the beach or to the desert, any, any place that could inspire me to write. So those used to help me sometimes if I really wanted to write. And when did you start? the writing process? When did you start collecting those pieces? So, probably three years ago. So mm -hmm. it took me a long time to write that book, for three years. And uh, Sarah, your book is more, as we just talked, it's poetry and short stories. And I think a lot of us would agree that in our society, writing poetry tends to be a bit tricky because a lot of people are going to look at you and say, oh, is that what you went through? Is that something that you've gone through? And I think Ali as well knows what I'm talking about. And I'm sure some of you guys do understand what it is. So did you receive that kind of feedback from people around you, and did it affect your writing process? I did get that feedback. So if I would write about love, they would say, oh, who are you in love? Who is? So, you know, love doesn't have to be with... The, there are many different types of love. You know, you can love a friend, you can love nature, you can love even a person. Your life. I can love my life. So, yes, I did get that feedback, but... I tried not to care because writing is so important to me. To, to it's essential for me to stay sane. 
still, I just, so I think the same them. message goes for everyone who yeah. really have sometimes that kind of questions, just continue writing, never bother about what people say. Adia, um, writing the book, I think, didn't take you long in terms of writing process, mm -hmm. correct? How long yeah. did it take you? Uh, well, I just wrote it then and there. Because it's a children's book, right? Yeah, it's, it's a children's book. Um, the good thing about Iman is that she sort of helped me through and uh, encouraged me to go and also look at uh, the Emirates Literature Festival. Um, and they had a couple of workshops about, you know, um, how to write a book, how to illustrate it. So I wrote, and then I went back to these workshops and refined everything. It's, a, it's an ongoing process, especially that I work with an illustrator, so I don't like to get too much technical with her. I just let her, I give her the text and she can just sort of interpret it. So it's, it's a joint sort of venture between the two of us. It's an interpretation from me. So that was going to be the second question that I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Was it difficult, the process of working with an illustrator, to translate your words into an artwork? Um, I think it's really um, a blessing when you have someone that's very passionate about it. So when I went to Hidai, she's like, oh, I always wanted to do that, you know? And I'm like, okay, great, so let's all do this. So, um, so when you have someone who's really interested and really wants to do it, and um, I mean, I don't worry. I mean, I just give Hidai, I'm like, you know what, take your time, do however you want to do it. But, you know, she, eventually she'll get it done. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's that relationship that I have with her, so, uh, which I really love. Um, and um, hoping that you know we always will have that sort of relationship going forward as well with the other books. Um, just to add a realistic aspect to everyone, how long did it take you from finishing the actual lines of the book uh, to actually finishing the artwork as well, the artwork process? It was because um... I want people to be realistic about their plans when they plan such a book to understand that it's not something you finish within a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It really takes time. It takes time also because we all sort of have jobs as well. Like so, uh, Hida is always constantly traveling. She works for Sauce. Um, so her time is limited. So again, like it really depends how you do it. But then um, she also <coughs> sort of would do something and illustrate. And then I'm like, actually, I'm inspired by her illustration. So I changed the text to go with the illustration. Yeah. So that's also something that happened. So give and take, back and forth, um, four months. And then probably, because we did the English first, and then I wanted to do the Arabic, and that probably took a little bit more just to make sure that it's not an auto translation. That's another, yeah, that you capture the essence and then you say it again in Arabic. It's not that you're translating it from English. Mm. It has to be like a new fresh story. It, it needs to be told in Arabic and not be translated from English to Arabic. Fair enough, yeah. Um, Omar, your book, you said that you, it's a collection of everything that you've been speaking about in different talks and so on. So the process of writing, like you said, it was about 160 pages around. Mm. Um, yeah, so how is the process of writing the book? Did you like collect it from the notes? Did you write it across? Um... Uh, so th there's a funny thing with, with the book. Uh, what I like about the book, it's, it's different. Um, it's in no particular order. See, first of all, I have a problem. Myself, when I talk to anyone, I, uh, I move from one topic to another in the span of 60, 60 seconds. I'll talk about five different topics. Uh, and it's never, I can never have um, a proper process of thoughts, like, you know, it's, it's all over the place. So the book is also like that, like, it's, there's so many different ideas. So when you pick up the book, you could just open a page, it could be 20, 30, or 40, or whatever page uh, you want, and then it'll give you a message. Now the message, uh, the message from the book is a collection of social and emotional intelligence. Uh, when I was interviewed recently, they told me, like, what do you expect people to, read, to, to learn from your book? I said nothing, because I said it's nothing that you don't already know or have been taught at home, uh, at school, or religion. So it's all about this. You know the same thing. The only thing with the book I said is I omerized it. So the way I talk, when you read the book, it's, you think, even if I didn't put my name on it, you'll say, oh, this sounds like Omar. Like when you talk to me, you, you know, whatever. But uh, in terms of how I, the, the process on, on how I got the, the, uh, the content of, uh, of each, uh, you can say, heading, is uh, uh, I just kept talking to myself. I, I do that almost every day. Before I, leave the, I, before I leave my apartment to go to work, I have this thing when I'm in the shower, and then I look at myself in the mirror. I just have a thing in doing this every morning, just talking to myself and imagine I'm Denzel Washington, I just love that guy. So then, uh, you know, he just... Right. <laughs> I couldn't be, but yeah, but you know, he's, he's a good uh, speaker, he or whatever. So, uh, and then those words just came up, and then I just continued writing, and just like Sara mentioned, I, 
I would write at different places. So if I didn't have the laptop in front of me, so yeah, a lot of people ask me if I wrote or I typed. I was using the laptop, but most of the time I would, uh, if I was at the beach, because like I said, I was not doing anything for about eight months, uh, I would write it down on my phone, and then I would like send it to myself, to my email, and I'll go back and then take all those. Because it's very hard to get the writer's luck and be in that, in that mood to write it in the same way you're speaking, you know? Mohammed, um, your book, as far as I remember, because we discussed it before, you actually wrote it as separate chapters and blogged each chapter at its time, correct? Yes, yeah. So uh, I'm just going to explain about uh, how I started the book and then maybe the writer's block process, because that's very important for every writer, how to get through your writer's block and what to do before and after it. Now, this how I started my book is I have a website. It's called theawkwardcorner.com. And what I do in the awkward corner uh, <laughs> is none of you. No, uh, I, ha I do a lot of things. I talk about a lot of stuff. I, I'm. I think a lot of things. Also, a lot of times, every second, I have difficult times to remember things too. So what happens is I type them all down, and I and in the awkward corner, I always kind of keep the separate uh, chapters there. So what I wanted to do is keep. I wanted to do this trend thing. It didn't work, and it did work. Uh, what happened is I ch posted a chapter every week uh, and I wanted to get people interested about this without I don't have a fan base of 20,000 people I don't have a lot of fan Facebook fans or anything like that but I wanted to because I wanted to have faith in, in whatever I'm what I have to say or the character has to say so I did it and um, a week after the first chapter was was sent I got emails from the US from anonymous people who I don't know, who have no reason to comment on me because they know me who I am, but anonymous people telling me that you have something, this character, we want the second week, we want to hear what she says. Second week, I got even more followers. Third, fourth, fifth week. Until the sixth chapter, I got my writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> and that writer's block is worse than anything you could ever imagine. Uh, because um, a writer's block is not just, you, you think it's just going to be a writer's block, it's going to pass throughout a month, no. Uh, it took me six months to, to, to go over this writer's block, and it took me to travel to many places, because it, your mind needs time to relax, your mind needs understanding, your mind needs ways to create the character. I felt like the character stopped talking to me. I couldn't, I didn't know what she wanted to say, I didn't know how I was talking to her anymore. She wasn't, there was no voice coming out. And I believe in that. As an actor, I believe that there is uh, words coming out of that character. And that's where it stopped. So I remember I went uh, on an amazing trip in February. And I had my whole mind cleared. And um, I shared it actually with Noor. And what happened is I came back and then she just kept talking to me. The character kept talking, I kept talking. And I wrote four chapters on that same week. Uh, uh, but I so feel you like have a writer block. Talk with Noor. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean is like you guys need to give your brain a rest. Honestly, uh, your brain needs time to understand creativity, to understand the writing process, whatever it is. Uh, you need to give time for yourself before your writing, because what makes your writing the best is yourself. Um, we'll come back to the writer's block for each of you, but Mohammed. Um, you said that you wrote the chapters separately and published them separately. Yes. Um, do you think, had you not gone that route, that, for instance, you actually put them together without really sharing it with anyone, yeah. do you think Chloe may have had taken a different route in the short story? I don't think so, because it was, a, 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 as I said, sorry, I didn't explain this before, there are the advantages <coughs> and disadvantages of what I did. The advantages part is that people, um, I was getting people interested. The disadvantages is that a lot of people were telling me what they thought of it. And when I hear about what people think about Chloe and how she's going to continue on, that's when I was like, whoa, I need to like slow down and pull the reins on Chloe because I didn't really understand what was going on. So uh, I think I would say my, my advice is uh, if, you want, if you do want to start online, get your chapters ready and then post them every week so that you have some sort of a base. But don't do them like you are just going to magically have them every week because that doesn't happen. Just in case you're wondering, Alia is getting ready to go boxing right now. <laughs> She's actually really going boxing. Okay, uh, thank you, Mohammed. For the recipe, what was the process that you dealt with the writer's block that you had? Uh, so, actually, my dream at first was to publish a novel. And I would start writing a story, 
and then I would get bored, I would stop. Start another story, keep counting the words, like I'm writing an essay, and then stop again. And on the side, I had these poems and process that I wrote just for the fun of it, just for the sake of writing, no pressure. So that's why I didn't worry as much with those writings about the writer's block. And again, when I did have that block, I would just, I would let it be. Because in life we have ups and downs. So usually when I reach to that down part, that's when I would write. And that's, so, yeah, that solved my problem. Um, uh, yeah, I think at the point where you were writing the book that you're writing and the other books, you actually did a lot of writing at the same time. Yeah. So you got the first book that we are still working on. Mm -hmm. You've got Al Alaya. You've yeah. got the poetry that you're posting. You've got the short stories that you were posting yeah. and the articles you were sharing with Sale. Yeah. At any point of time, did you feel like your mind went completely blank? Um, what I, okay. I think you really need to practice and you really need to sort of be committed to it, to whatever you do in life boxing but um, uh, so what I do is um, every day at work where you know I take some time out and I just write it doesn't have to be good it doesn't matter I tell myself it's okay if it's, it's if it's really not that great that's fine just keep writing keep writing every day I, I just try I try to make it a point to write even if there's nothing to say I say there's nothing to say today and I say why there's nothing to say so I'm pretty much that way I'm hoping eventually I'll be able to get something going but yes, I do get stuck at times. Sometimes I'm uninspired. Um, I usually work with muses. <laughs> it's different people, different situation, uh, sort of, uh, with my poetry especially, sort of brings that aspect out. But yeah, you, you really have to be committed, and it's all right. One day you have something to say, one day you don't. Some, but just the whole writing is, for me, it's sort of a practice to continue doing it. Because like anything, if you just leave it, you know, you become weaker and you know the tendency of you getting back on track takes a bit a little bit longer so uh, um, on. the writer's block I mean for me uh, uh, I actually I'm, I think when I started writing um, it was pretty easy because like I said I mean again I'm not trying to go back to whatever but I was in a certain stage of my life where uh, I I just had so much anger and god knows what inside and I, and, I, and I had a lot of free time as well and because look I'll, I'll, I'll be very frank okay when for a man particularly when you are not working it'll drive you crazy I didn't if I could work at McDonald's I would just work at McDonald's I would do anything but just to sit like this it's it's really really bad so I would do I, I, there were two things that were keeping me very occupied I worked with uh, think up and uh, the Think Up is a volunteer uh, organization, and well, now they're doing social media and so many other things. But uh, I started volunteering with them. I started doing a lot of things with uh, uh, with uh, orphanage centers and, and everything else. But also the uh, so the other half of my day was um, was uh, writing a book. And a lot of me, some of you might think, okay, what happened? Why was I not working for such a long time? Uh, it was because. Every place I would go to in an interview, I'd say you're overqualified. And how you know how do you go? And you're in Marathi and you're young, and like, oh, you have all these years' experience, and you know you're overqualified. Or it was it was different things like that. And I just think you know, in the end of the day, it's all in God's hands. So, house and sleep, as we say, you know. But uh, so yeah. So this time I was uh, I didn't really have that kind of writer's block. So I just continued writing and writing and writing and writing. Um, and uh, and another and if there were times where I wanted to be inspired, believe it or not, I mean I just love artists. Uh, because I can kind of relate to them because they have they have a lot of the way they you know the way they portray their stuff in art galleries and everything and you know they they all have something to say and of course you know whatever uh, and I think uh, for me as well I would interpret it uh, whatever painting it was or anything or drawing or or picture in my own way so I would go to art galleries and I loved going around DIFC because I live very close to DIFC where they have all that and. Uh, and uh, I'd get inspired by them, and I'll go back, and then that's how I'd work against uh, the block. Yeah. Uh, before Adia leaves, because apparently she's going to be winning right now, um, so give us one advice for the writers who may have thought about writing a book, but may have stopped before starting it, or started writing a few pages and then they stopped. What kind of advice would you give them? Um, I think you, you need to feel comfortable with sharing your work. 
um, and it really helps where you, I, I mean, with me what happened is I actually sent it to a few friends and Iman was one of them and she's the only one that got back to me and said, Hadi, you know, you really, this is something, this is something. And don't be too attached to it that you don't try to look at it from every single angle. I mean, um, the second book that inshallah will be publishing in September was initially written for an adult audience and then I actually changed it all up and made it into a children's storybook. Um, because, you know, um, I just felt like, I, I, it, it, there was an element of innocence in it that I didn't want it, like if it was adult, I felt that I wouldn't communicate the same thing. So don't get so attached to it that you don't try to like look at it. And another advice that Iman always tells me, don't send me something until you go and reread it oh, yeah. and print it and re-look at it and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, You're gonna get the same thing. <laughs> so, so always just give some time for it to sort of marinate and stuff, it might sound good. Um, like I said, you keep practicing. I, I mean, I make it a point to try to write, and I, you know, I write with Iman, I know she's like, why don't you become a full-time sailor, and I'm like, I, I like the fact that I can write whenever I want, but I did make a commitment in the beginning of the year saying, okay, I'm going to write six articles, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to attempt to write three books, publish three books. So so I sort of put a goal for myself that I try to achieve. Whether I get there or not, that's fine. But, you know, it's sort of a motivation for you to continue on. That's so, yeah. Point. That's a good point. Okay. Do you want to run now? May I? Yes. Uh, Thank you, Adia. All right, uh, so coming back to you guys, Sarah, what do you leave as an advice for the same kind of problem with people who may stop midway or never even start with it under the excuse of, we're very busy, we can't write? I read this quote today that I really love, and it was tweeted by Paolo Cuedo. Uh, he said that wisdom is not, uh, is not a big thing. It's the sum of small revelations. So I think that you don't have to have this huge epiphany to write a 40,000 word book so that you can publish. I mean, especially with digital publishing, it's really easy to publish anything you want. So if you have these small inspirations, small revelations, then just write whenever you you have them. And if you want to wait for them, wait for them. If you don't, go look for them. As, uh, as you said, like to travel or to just choose your places, meet new people, anything. So uh, I think that helps. How much? Sorry, what was the question? The question yeah. Uh, what advice would you give people who yeah. want to write a book but then they can't commit to it per se? Um, that's a, it's a tough question because, uh, like I said earlier, um, it wasn't it wasn't my intention to write to publish a book, as Sarah mentioned in the beginning. Uh, one of the interesting ways that it happened is after I've written all of this. Um, see, I'm an Aries. We usually start something and we don't finish it. We just have this very bad habit of doing that, okay? Fine, I wrote everything and I have a colleague at work. Her name is Nof Al Hashimi. So Nof reads a lot of books. She's part of the book club and everything. I'm sure you know her. Mm -hmm. So then w when I told her, like, yeah, I wrote something and whatever. I just left it with me. So she said, let me read what you've written. So I sent it to her. And she was like, wow, this is really good stuff. Like, why don't you publish it and this? And I was like, I can't be bothered. I know it's going to be, it'll take me forever, etc., etc. And for some reason, I don't know why, I didn't even tell my own sister, who's very good friends with Iman. Uh, and, you know, she would have just re recommended me to meet Iman and, and, and finish the, and, and publish the book. But um, last year on my birthday, uh, as I was about to leave to go to Amsterdam and Berlin with my friend uh, Ahmed, who was. Uh, Muhammad's, uh, <laughs> Muhammad's brother-in-law, Ahmed Darmaki. Uh, uh, Nof was like, look, I have something for you for your birthday, but you know, uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be as great as, as this trip you're going to do in Europe. So I was like, uh, what is it? And then she came and she's like, she, she just put down these like five, no, six copies of my book, like physical. And I just took it and I was like, what in the world is this? And I open it and it's just, it's my book, like the physical. I couldn't believe it. I Obviously, I, I, I cried. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was like the best gift in the world, like the most sentimental thing ever. And I, I don't know how. Yeah. So she, she, so what did she do? She got in touch with an illustrator in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia. The company is called uh, Haya Design. And the girl that owns that company, Najla, she actually studied with me in AUD. So it was, 
she didn't know me, but but the way the book was designed, if you look at the book and you look at the con there's a lot of graphics. I get bored. I don't like words. I like colors and images and whatever. Like even with presentations at work, I have infographic all the time. So the book was exactly the way I envisioned it. It was full of colors and images, and uh, and uh, and next thing you know, I mean, I talked and my sister told me to speak to Iman, and we got the book uh, digitally published. So it was. Uh, so what happened to everyone? Just so you. Know. Yeah. 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 Stalk Nof, man. Yeah, exactly. Stalk Nof. Nof is really cool. Well, she's, I, I guess that's the advice. Yeah. So Get her friend. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things that you guys need to pick up from both of them, and we're going to come back to Muhammad on this, that a lot of writers, when they're actually first done with their book, they think that their book is not good enough to be published. But never make that assumption on your own. And I think Muhammad as well said that at the very beginning, and I know he had that assumption about his book. Never assume that. Share it around with a few friends. You never know what would you hear from feedback, and you never know what kind of value comes from your book. So never let it stop at your hands. Hamid. Okay, so um, for, I'm, I'm going to explain my advice to you. Obviously, as, as I, I'm being called a writer, being on the stage is something huge to me. I never thought that I would be here sitting. And I'm not doubting myself in any way, but it's just that you reach a point in your life where things that uh, I appreciate so much like this, uh, to give all upcoming writers an advice, I will come to that. But I think I want to I want to speak about the not just the process, but why Iman said the, the competence issue. Uh, I don't have, or I didn't used to have a lot of com ad competence in my writing, and it's not just because I wasn't competent in the content. I was competent in the content. I knew that the content was really good, but I wanted to make sure that it would be uh, not perfect, but close to it. I'm 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 inspired greatly by Jacqueline Winston. She's a children's book writer, and she used to write for. A, like 3,000 books, and she has, she has in her books cats that used to talk, trees that used to move, chairs that used to dance, and children that used to speak of other languages. And to me, being in that age and bottling up my feelings and all of that, and reading Jacqueline Wilson, that opened my mind to a lot of new things. So I, I learned from her that you can write whatever you want to write, and that thing what you are going to write is going to be amazing. And you have to have that confidence in yourself. So first advice, you have to have some sort of confidence. Whether it is substitute, as in it's very subtle and low, or you can have it loud and clear, but you have to have confidence in whatever you're going to write. Because whether you like it or not, it's going to influence people, small or large. It will influence people some way. Um, my second advice I would say is be patient and, and read and always read your, your work. Always remember that your work is going to be read by a lot of people, uh, editors like uh, Iman, um, people like me who are normal people, or people who are known in, in like, grammar or literature. So you're going to have people that are going to be always criticizing your work. What you have to know, get your basics in your, in your literature, get your basics in your grammar. So that's very honest, because as much as we say we love writing, if you don't write it correctly, no one is going to care. Be not the, not the, the idea is, I, I'll tell you why I'm saying this, I'm not being mean or anything. I got my work to be edited in the US, and uh, I was talking to my editor, uh, and my editor said, it's fine, your work is really good, it's up to, he gave me a lot of positives. I don't need to t say them now, because I don't want you to, to feel that I'm talking this way as an overconfidence. But uh, there was a lot of positivity that's coming from his side. But there was a lot of negativity as well, because he was telling me, well, you forgot a comma here, you forgot this there, you forgot that there, you forgot that there. So it was a lot of points that Iman also pointed out to me. So as a writer, get your basics right, have a lot of confidence, and uh, re reread your work, understand your work, love your work, be passionate about it. Uh, I'm so passionate now about mm, the work that I've created. Although it is a 50, 60, 70 page work, so it up, it's a good but one. I'm, I'm honestly telling you, uh, the, she ended it that way. When I say she, I meant the character, the main character. She wanted it to end it that way. I'm, I'm not psychotic, I don't have two brains. <laughs> but uh, I know I'm talking like a pedophile or something else. <laughs> But uh, uh, as psychotic. That, that no, I'm it. sorry, I know no, the camera's yeah. rolling. How old are you? Yeah, no, but no spoilers. <laughs> no, no spoilers. But honestly, I felt like she wanted to stop talking, and that's when the story ended. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you guys. Does anyone want to add anything to this? Uh, no, uh, all that. You want to do that or no? Yeah. My own. Yeah. Okay. No. So what we're gonna do right now, before we take the questions from any of the audience is that we're going to allow each of them to read a very short excerpt from their books so you guys get to know a little bit more about the books. Do you have your iPads or do you want me to buy? Uh, yeah. 
Right, so the first one is going to be Sara al Muda, and her book, as I mentioned, is the poetry and short stories. Do you know which page? So you guys prepare the questions, whatever you want to ask, whatever you want to be inspired, whatever you want to know about the process of writing and so on, please do ask. Right, Sara. Okay, so sometimes when I write, I have some quotes or some things that I am proud of and that I sometimes also reread whenever I need to reread them, just to give me strength when I need it. So this quote is one of the quotes that I usually remind myself of. That little boy had a dream he had the ability to live that dream. He did not lose his strength over what he lost, but gathered power over what he was about to gain. And that's kind of my motto. Thank you, Sarah. And the next book we're going to be hearing from is Umar al book, Just Treat It. Um, I can't say. There you go. Uh, um, by the way, there's a lot of people that ask me, why did I call the book Just Read It? And it's not a, a command. It depends how you say it. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Uh, the reason I call it Just Read It is because, again, I was talking to Nof and I was like, okay, so I have all these notes, right? And I've written it, whatever. And I was like, look, I don't know what to call this book because it's not business. It's not this. It's just everything cool in life. So like, I just want people to just read it. She's like, okay, why don't you just call it that? I was like, what? She's like, that. Just read it. I was like, oh, I was like, Really? Can I actually get away with that? And then I just went on like uscopyright.com and I found out there's nothing like that. I was like, there you go. Just read it, you know? So then when people ask me, what's the book called? I'm like, just read it. Like, okay, I will, but what is it? I'm like, just read it. <laughs> They're like, what is it about? I'm like, you know, so I have to go back to this. Well, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay. Um, okay, so this is this is a bit about this is not, again not a just like I said it's not just about business about anything artists or whatever uh, politicians. Um, so one of the points that I talk about here is um, reputation. You as a person and, and reputation. Okay. So in the very top it says, if you're not a likable person, your journey stops here. Reputation is everything. Yes. Now if you're reading this, you know exactly what I mean. In business, you need to be liked by people. They need to see that you're genuine, credible, trustworthy, and not just in it for the money. Most business is won by referrals. If someone doesn't like you, he or she might tell a hundred people about you. And if he, he or she does like you, they might just tell one person. We always hear this all the time. Um, work to fix your image. Otherwise, find a partner who is likable and able to front the business or just don't get into the business in the first place. This is one point. Thank you, Alma. Published digital books and they don't know how to browse ebooks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you know where is it? Uh, okay. So I just want to answer one thing. Uh, a lot of people were asking me lately, why did you call it shallow? I mean, shallow is such a negative word to use on a on a book for for adult, you know, uh, readers and for adult teenage I mean, for for that segment of young adults. So shallow does. It doesn't mean that this character is pompous or she's mean or she's, I don't know, you'll find out. But shallow to me was, was free of feeling pain, free of feeling doubt, free of feeling boredom, free of feeling, it's just a feeling of freedom. There is a part in the story where you'll find the true meaning of shallow and that will definitely be defined later on, but I'm going to read from chapter two. Chapter two is called I am, but I don't want to be. The sun brushed the grounds as I heard whispers from the disabled leaves falling off the tall trees. Silently, I breathed a sign of hope. I felt the scorching heat, although I was still on my toes, about stepping outdoors to what I assume as the unknown. I thought many times of the same incident of why I decided to step out into the first place. My mother squeezed my hand, and I felt the sweat in her shivering palm. Was it I who was scared, or was it mother? Love it. Part of yours. All right. Do you have any questions? Can you read something from Anaya? No worries. So. All right. Now the book, being a very short book, I will still not read it all, just so that you guys can actually go and buy the book and know what's the ending. All right. 
Um, Alaya was born with sand in her hair. And you have to really see the illustrations because the illustrations are really beautiful. Okay. So Alaya was born with sand in her hair. Her hair was sandy because she was born on the shores of Jumeirah. No matter how many times Alaya washed her hair, the sand remained. She grew not to mind the sand in her hair. And I will not read further so you guys can go and buy the book. Nice. Mm -hmm. so, questions? Does anyone have any questions? Yes, no. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Iman. I think what you're doing with Stael and over these years and watching you grow is amazing. Let's give her a round of applause. Um, I think I just, I'm going to make a comment and then ask a question. Go ahead. My comment is that there's so many um, common grounds between being a visual artist and the writers. Through the talking about process, uh, the vulnerability of uh, exposing yourself. Um, and there's a very nice book. Um, if you, as writers read this book and a lot of artists are influenced by literature and a lot of uh, literature has been influenced by art um, the book is called uh, The Novel of the Future by Anais Nin Note it all down, The Novel of Future and uh, she wrote this book not in the future obviously, not now but years and years ago, I can't remember the dates exactly because I don't want to give wrong information but probably like in the 40s or something like that and she talks in the book about how uh, writers, artists, poets shift between a place of reality and dream and how they travel between those realms easily, whereas others maybe live in only the dream or only can accept the reality. Now, my question is, sorry to make that very long comment, I apologize, but my question is, uh, which is also interesting, that everybody on the panel was from a different genre. And we heard that Alia will be uh, publishing pieces that are different than children's yeah. books. But it, the, for our speakers today, are you thinking to uh, venture into different genres of writing other than the ones that you're comfortable in? Yes, no, and why? That's a great question. Uh, for me, yes, I, I can't publish one book and stop there. And I won't publish the same exact genre I need to change. And I think I will go with publishing that novel or even short stories just in case I get bored again. So, yeah, I think it's important to keep writing. Uh, for me, uh, Noor, uh, I'm, I'm already working on the second one. And again, it's, uh, it's within the same area of um, entrepreneurship and, and everything. And uh, Khaled and Amri, Joined up, or oh, already sits here in the front. So Khalid and myself also known were as Drake. <laughs> also known as Drake in the Kandora. He looks like Drake, by the way. Anyways, so uh, so Khalid and myself, like uh, we, we we go to universities and schools, and we we try to encourage the youth um, to you know to get to more, to inspire them exactly to motivate so them as well. So you keep within that realm. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what we're saying. Which is great. Um, I don't think I can get out of fiction because once you're in fiction, you're in this land of like possibilities that are endless. I think in being in my genre, it's very it's very cool because when you're in fiction, you're in a lot of places. You can write about children fiction, you can write about adult fiction, you can go into teenagers. Uh, they're actually considered as different genres, though. Yeah, but then the main genre is I'm going to stay in, in young adult adult segments because uh, what I write and, and the style that I write, hopefully, if you do read cello. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I feel like the sometimes the meanings or the way the sentence were, is placed is going to be a bit uh, hard for uh, young adults to teenagers to children to read it. So I will say, yes, in my same genre, and I am working on my second one. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Mira. Oh, how did you know me? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, first I'd like to make a comment because I'm a... I'm coming I think I'm, I'm a self-proclaimed writer. Um, I actually I don't know what this has to do with anything, but I like to sleep and then wake up in the middle of like the night, and I just wake up and I start writing something just to shock myself later on. And I <laughs> <laughs> I go back to sleep concept. and then I wake up at like you know in the afternoon because I have summer and I anywho, I wake up and I'm like wow I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, in the beginning, I was like, okay, I could never get this anywhere. Like, I would look at my writing, and I'm like, that's scary. Like, too many emotions. And then I showed it to my friends, and they're like, okay, you have to do something about that. And then I published one. I didn't publish. I posted one on my Instagram. 
and everyone liked it i was like okay i'm doing something good but i also knew that i wasn't doing something good because i wasn't getting criticized when you get criticized you know that you're doing something good and um writer's block like i've always wanted to write a book okay um i feel like There we go, I just look in there. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm like sticking with short stories. Um, I was like, anyhow, I'm just going to need to question, it's so awkward. Um, it's okay. So what's your question? Um, how, like, you guys read a lot of books, right? That's yeah. how you start writing. I do. You do read a lot of books. You read a lot of books. you say all of you do? Yes. Okay, for a second, they freak me out. You have to Did, read to write. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I already asked you this, Dermot, but um, you guys, because you're all, I'm so sorry. So, um, <laughs> reading books, yes, I'm so sorry, I'm so why nervous. Did, why did we write it? Or? No, not why do you write it, um, it's, um, did anyone ever disapprove of you? Like, because you guys were locals and you're like, oh, that's kind of weird because mm -hmm. you're like local and you're doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's normal. But yeah. There was, um, uh, when I saw, when I told uh, Mira to answer your question, when uh, when I told some people that I was going to write the book, especially the ones that my friends that I know, they're all like, yeah, yeah whatever. What do you think you are, like Paulo Coelho or mm -hmm. whoever? And you, they they have that in the beginning. Some of them say it as a joke, but there's always some truth to the joke. You know when they say that. But uh, uh, I just continued, and there, the, so there's some other people, which I have a lot of my friends are much older, and there are a lot of my friends who are professors from university. Uh, when they knew that I was writing, they knew I was writing, this is the topic that I'm, I'm, I'm touching upon. They're like, oh, this is excellent. I mean, your leadership is already talking about entrepreneurship. They already have several initiatives, and you're writing about it. They're going to absolutely love it. And, and also, seriously, like I read uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid's book, My Vision, unbelievable. Like that book. Is, is something that really caught. So what I always tell people is um, when the leadership of our country, they go out and they talk about things and they do certain things and they put it on social media, they're also telling, sending you a message in a way and telling you, you know, do kind of the same thing, you know, not use the social media in a different way or because they wrote the book, not just for the sake of writing a book and turning to be whatever. So my book is kind of like, and even in my book, there's a lot of things that I mentioned about what Sheikh Mohammed had said and everything else. So when I told people about this, then they would like, they, 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 some of them would encourage me, but the ones closest to me, unfortunately, didn't. You should never be discouraged by that. There will always be people around you who would say, no, it's not good enough, why would you go, get into that, and so on, but never let that stop you. Because I think every one of us has done anything that's gone through that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank I you. I think in my case, uh, about um, like disapprovals and so on, the thing that's good with me, I feel, um, a lot of people could have the same uh, kind of relationship, but my relationship with my family is very close, um, extremely close. Not awkward close, but close. <laughs> no, but I was, I was talking and I'm good, good, okay. But honestly, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I, yeah, I'm sorry, because I'm very awkward too. I understand you. Um, uh, the awkward corner dot com. So, uh, Supply marketing. Yeah, I work in marketing too, by the way. I just wanted to say something. So, regarding disapprovals, uh, I do have a lot of um, a strong ties with my family. So, my actual uh, great uncle started the Oman newspaper in 1923, and it was the first publication in the UAE. And uh, he used to put uh, writing. Uh, paragraphs and his majlis and people used to come and read and everything. So my family is very supportive of me writing, but I was writing in English, so that's another question. <laughs> uh, that's not even a disapproval. Uh, they, they really liked it. I'm still getting my mom to read it. Uh, my mom was actually also, she used to become, she was the head of education district in Sharjah before. So she was into education, she knew all of that. And uh, and so I, when I, whenever I had something, I remember when we were very young. This is a very good point, also as an advice: is your relationship with others, especially with your family, to help you in your support in your writing process. Uh, when I was young and I was starting out writing, I used to get a little bit uh, uh, this negativity from school, and mainly from our Canadian teacher. And then, uh, not, not because of anything, because of. He used to tell me, I, I, as I told you before, I'm, I'm, I was a kind of, I was a kind of kid that bottled up his feelings. We had a lot of friends and everything, but then you have this teacher that's like, 
you know, there is a point of your life where you're going to stop writing because you won't be eventually good at it. And wow. that's where, uh, yeah, I, it was very tough, but he was surprisingly cool later on. So, <laughs> yeah, no, after we were really cool with him, it was all uh, water under the bridge. But, but I, what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, that disapproval or that disadvantage maybe made me want to write even more. So my mother and my family were always there backing me up on everything that I wanted to write, everything that I wanted to learn. So I used to get a lot of support. All right. Thank you, Khaled. Sarah, do you want to add something? Yeah. Pass the mic, I want to pass the mic. <laughs> so, yeah, my family was very, very supportive, although I'm sure most of them don't read the book. And lucky for me, it's in English, and since I wrote about love and things like that, I'm sure many of them won't approve, but many of them don't understand English anyways, so I, I didn't care about You're that. You're So, but, yeah, as long as you have supportive people, stick with them. And ignore people. Any other questions? Yes, <coughs> Rebecca. Hey. Hi. Um, I'm interested in the uh, the sort of editing processes that you guys mm -hmm. go through between uh, physically doing the first go of writing and, and getting to a finished finished book or finished product. Um, and we've talked about a little bit about sort of self editing and make sure you read and reread and 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 correct your own, your own book as you, as you go before you pre present it to a publisher. And you've talked also about working with a, an external publisher, uh, editor, sorry. Editor, yeah. And I just wondered whether that had been a useful process in sort of refining your, your writing or whether that's a difficult process maybe um, to, to get criticism and, and accept criticism. It's a great question. That was. And I think all of you guys have gone oh, through editors. Yeah. Story. Yeah. The most okay, let's make it short, yeah? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> The most difficult part for me was editing. I, I, I worked with one editor, and she didn't change. She di didn't just change the grammar and spelling. She would change the whole meaning of what I wrote. And I, I paid her, and I was like, that's it. I'm not using what she edited, except small things that I did. And I worked with another editor again. Um, and may and I told her a million times, you know, is it okay that you change what? Is it still what I? Is it still written by me? Because it's it's my book, Your my need to be my honest. work. You know, I feel like someone is intruding, changing it to their own words. So that was very hard. But if we have that editor who can do that, who can change the spelling, grammar, make sure that it's good enough, but with the same meanings, same voice of the author, then that's great. And did you find an editor who could do that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I found a really good one. Okay, and as Noor said, uh, you should all be friends with Noor because what she did is she gave the book, she paid three editors, so that's it. I never, ever reread the book. Till today, I haven't read the book. After it's actually printed and published, never read it. So, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So uh, about the editing process. Now, for for myself, I didn't want to just give it to anyone or my friends or anyone else because it's such a uh, such a delicate thing that when 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 I when it when it finally when the, the story finally finished after one year and three months, I couldn't just give it to anyone and just edit it. I needed someone who is reputable and who understands the editing process because the editing process is not about about just removing lines or stuff. It's rewriting a whole idea of that meaning, the idea of that sentence. So what I did is I searched for the three best editors around the globe, and three of two of them is actually in the U.S. Uh, Fine Arts Editing and Editors Rewrite and Writers Edit in the U.K. Writers Edit in the U.K. is very expensive, so I like toss them around. <laughs> but then, <laughs> but then there are two in the U.S. that are very good. One which worked with Penguin and they're with part of the Exhibit is Publishing, and I used them. And then I did with uh, another publishing company called Writers Edit, which is there with the bookbaby.com. Bookbaby is the largest network for publishing distribution around the world in history. They publish around 9,000 books per day. They do huge publications with uh, Penguin. They are the main distributor for Penguin, actually. They are a huge, huge people. So I got the writers team, their fine editing team, and they did my editing work. They're actually cheaper than the one in the UK, just saying. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, 
So, but what's really nice about the editing process, and uh, also, and I got it edited by sale too. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> but yeah. that's not something we offer. We actually yeah. sell them. To yeah, no. So, so Iman also helped me see a lot of things that I didn't think about. Uh, but I was very much, very much in every single process of the editing, every line that was released. Uh, by the way, nothing was removed. If, I, if so, anything, some things were added, actually. Uh, I added some comments, I added some comments, I rewrote some timings, I did some things. I refined the work, I didn't change anything, it's just refinement. But the editing process is extremely crucial. But for you edited, I'm telling you, you have to edit it from a very reputable company, because if not so, then you're getting still editing from people that are just people, you know? That's very important. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Anyone has any more questions? Please ask. <laughs> Adela. I have a technical question. I've never sure. really thought about editing so much as I have in the last five minutes. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you do it in track changes? Or, or does someone just uh, offer you a completely new page? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't appreciate new pages uh, because I don't want people to tell me how to write my book. Mm -hmm. Again, your book is your work. The thing well, I'm not saying. It's, 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 see, this is again goes back to my confidence issue. I had a lot of com uh, no confidence in my work, and as as as, as funny as it may seem, having uh, no confidence gives you a boost of confidence later on. It's a, it's a different kind of effect. So what happened with me is. When they kept, so for example, one editor told me, uh, the one with Book Baby, he told me, why don't you, yeah, that's an actual company. Uh, so uh, he told me, why don't you actually rewrite it to a sentence where you make it in a way that she's saying it from her voice of her mind. I told him, mm, it's not gonna work, because I've been working on this for three months, and I knew that her voice wasn't supposed to be this way. So I declined that comment, although the editing was correct. He just had a comment on the verba verbalization of that sentence. So you, the, and what's nice about editing, sorry I'm talking a bit too much, but it's such an important process for me. It took me almost a month and a half. The, what's nice about the editing process is once you start editing each sentence, you not only learn about the verbalization of wordings, but also the different kind of uh, pronunciations you can use, the comments you can use, but you also learn how to interact with your piece once again. Then you uh, allow yourself to understand your, uh, your sentence, how you can manipulate your sentence to work differently, still stick to the editing process. So the editors not only give you an editing eye, but they also give you uh, a word of, uh, it could be like your, your friend that you never knew, be but your friend is much more talented, obviously, in, in editing and writing and grammar and pronunciation. So I would say that mm, technically uh, I didn't change anything in terms of the whole piece of a chapter, but I did change a lot of uh, some wording, some verbalizations and stuff like that, yes. But to answer your question, it was track changes. Most of the editors really work with track changes and you get to choose whether you accept it or decline it and so on. Uh, yeah? Yeah. For, for me, it was because, um, well, I knew the profile of the two people that looked at the book. was uh, One was a uh, former journalist for the Times, Sunday Times in the UK, and the Washington Post. So when I looked at it, I was like, okay, fine. I think they know what they're talking about. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Someone had a question at the back, right? Yeah. And I think that'll be the last question before we close for the day. Hi. Um, as an art student, uh, if, if there's something I've uh, learned, and also as uh, the lady in front pointed out, artists, Writers, uh, uh, artists, writers, um, designers, they all have a, a similar realm. Um, what, what I'd like to hear from uh, the writer's point of view is um, symbolism, which, uh, which is a sort of um, recurring theme in, in all their books, whether whichever genre they uh, dwell into. Uh, what would be each one's symbol? Is a symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, what do they stick to? Or if it's a secret, that's fine, but I just... Uh, like to know for the sake of curiosity. I can give you one of the symbols that I use. Usually, when I write about love, I I would use some poems or prose to write about my feelings. But others, I would create a whole story. So there's this feeling that I want to feel or live. I create a whole story just based on that feeling, and it's a very short story. But the moment, the whole moment, symbolizes my feelings, everything. So even if there's a river or if the meadow is blue, whatever I write has symbolizes some feeling that I felt at the time. Um, 
they were there's one symbol you know when you see it there's this brand now lots of people wear this t-shirt that says being human that was my symbol throughout the entire book that's what you'll you'll see that symbol uh, I think my symbol is being lost <laughs> I was really I was I, I, I don't mean Seriously? it in a negative way <laughs> no but I, I was I didn't mean it in a negative way I'm sorry but I, I was lost in thought as I say mm -hmm. I was lost in what the character wanted to speak uh, it's so captivating once you start writing and it goes into the second chapter the verses that you have to speak the words that she says the kind of uh, uh, the kind of confusion that she goes through the kind of um, problem that she faces I think the symbol for me is also the meaning of the book shadow and what freedom is and what free is and and how she moved on towards that goal of being free so that symbolism of being free and for the writer to be lost in that is the idea of the book thank you everyone just closing notes you'll find outside the roll-ups for each book that we've published so far and you'll find there's a QR code on it you can scan it to actually get the download links for the books if you want to purchase them. They're in Kindle, iBooks, Kobo, and a lot of more platforms. Uh, for you to actually purchase any of those books on those platforms, you need to have a US or UK address. So just make sure that you get one before you do it. So you guys don't say, oh, we don't have it. It's not accessible for Middle East. Um, that's one. Number two, we've got the autographs uh, out there, uh, postcards for each one of our authors. So you can actually get them out there and get, get them signed by them. Um, last thing is a message we have from Literature Festival Office. Um, they are organizing a mentorship program for authors. Uh, they're looking for a female Imamati that they want to mentor for uh, writing a fiction book. So if any one of you guys is interested, just tag us on Insta uh, on Twitter, ask us that you want to be part of it, and we will get you in touch. All right? I want to add one. Sure. I just wanted to say that when I, w I wanted to publish the book, I was rejected so many times because it's not a story, not a fiction, not a novel. Um, and I, I reached a point where I was, th which I just gave up. So I, I was going to just continue writing and I'll publish whenever a publisher finds me. I wasn't going to look for one. And then I, I found sale on Google because I, I randomly usually search for publishers. And I went to their event and I talked to Iman and as soon as I told her she didn't read the book, she said, yes, I, I want a poetry book. Let's meet, let's discuss it. Just edit it first and, and let's meet. And just please clap for her. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We need more people like that here. Uh, and one more thing, guys. You, you didn't know, so if you didn't know, it's Mohammed's birthday today. Oh. Oh. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please come in outside so you can take pictures with the author. Thank you. Someone has the mic behind, right? Yes.